Welcome to Electron Online, and in this example, we're going to show you how to find the stable distribution matrix in the case that we have a 4x4 matrix and there's only one absorbing state, which means that we're going to have to find the inverse of a 3x3 matrix, which is a little bit tricky, and I haven't shown you yet how to do that here in this case, so I'm going to do that in this example. So we have our what we call our transfer matrix and our transfer matrix is divided into four regions i s r and zero and notice that the i is our identity matrix we have the zero matrix we have the r matrix and we have the s matrix over there and notice that if we find a stable transition matrix we then will end up with an s times an i minus r to the minus one minus one means the inverse of the difference between the the identity matrix and the r matrix so here we have the identity matrix there we have the r matrix we take the difference and now we want to try to find the inverse of that and that's the hardest part of it all so what we've done is we've paired up the difference between the in in um, between the identity matrix and the r matrix and paired it up with an identity matrix and now we're going to go through a methodology to turn the left side into the right side and on the right side will become the inverse of the left side. So in order to accomplish that we use what we call the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. So that means we need to have ones across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else and we do that in a very spe special technique. So this is how we go about doing that. The first thing we want to do is we want to take the first row and multiply it times 2 to get to 0.5 to become a 1. So we're going to take the first row and replace it by twice the first row. So the first row becomes twice the first row, multiply everything by 2, and so then this will become the following matrix. So here we get a 1, a minus 0 0.2, a minus 0 0.2, a 2, a 0, and a 0. And everything else stays the same, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.4, minus 0 0.1, 0, 1, 0, and minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0, 0, 1. All right, we're part way there. We have a 1 there, now we want to turn these two into zeros. The way you can do that in technique is, you take the second row, right there, you're going to replace it by the negative of this number, so that's 0 0.2 instead of negative 0 0.2, multiply times the first row and add it to the second row. And we do the same with the third row, we take the negative of this number right here, which is 0 0.1, multiply times the first row, and add it to the third row. When we do that, we get the following matrix. Okay, we end up with a 1 here. The first row stays exactly the same, so we might as well write that in. Minus 0 0.2200. 0, 0. Now, this is how that works. We multiply the first row by 0.2, that gives us 0.2, Add it to negative 0.2, that turns that into a 0. The same with the third row, we multiply this by a 0.1, so 0.1 times 1 is 0.1, add it to negative 0.1, we get 0. That's the technique to get zeros in that column. But now, of course, we have to do the same for everything else. So it's 0.2 times a negative 0.2, which is a negative 0.04, added to 0.4, which is a 0 0.36. A 0.2 times this is a negative 0.04 added to a 0.1, that would be a negative one of 0 0.14. So again, 0.2 times this is a 0 0.04, negative 0 0.04, added to negative 0 0.1 is a negative 0 0.14. 0 0.2 times this is a 0 0.4, added to 0, which gives us 0 0.4. Anything times 0 is 0, with this stays uh, 1, and that stays 0. So nothing changes there. Now for the third row, we take 0 0.1 times this, which is a negative 0.02 added to a negative 0.2, that is a negative 0.22. A 0.1 times a negative 0.2 is a negative 0.02 added to this, that's a 0 0.48. A 0.1 times 0.2 is, uh, two is a 0.2, 0 0.2. This stays 0 and that stays 1. So now the next thing we're going to do is turn this into a 1. So the first column is taken care of. Now we need to take this, turn this into a 1. To accomplish that, we take row 2 and replace it by row 2 divided by 0.36. If we divide 0.36 by 0.36, we get 1. Of course, we need to divide everything else in that row by 0.36. So let's go ahead and do that. So that means we go up here and we, take, we get a new matrix. 
Okay, row 1 and row 3 do not change, so this is 1, negative 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2. We get a 2, a 0, a 0. The row 3 stays the same, 0, negative 0 0.22, 0 0.48, 0 0.2, 0, and 1. And this becomes a 0, and that will be a 1, of course. 0.36 divided by 0.36 is 1. Now we're going to need a calculator. So negative 0.14 divided by 0.36 equals 0 0.39, and that's a negative, negative 0 0.39. Okay, 0.4 divided by 0.36, so 0.4 divided by 0.36 is 1.11. 1 divided by 0.36 is 2.78, and this remains a 0. So there's our next matrix. Now the next job is to take these two and turn them into zeros. To do that, we take the first row and replace it by the negative of that number, 0 0.2, times the second row, that's a row with a 1 in it, and add it to the first row. And we take the third row and replace it by the negative of that number, 0 0.22, multiply times the row with the 1 in it, which is row 2, and add it to row 3. That will make these two go to 0, and of course we have to take, a, take care of everything else in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So the middle row does not change. So we get 0, 1, negative 0 0.39. We get 1.11, 2.78, and 0. Here we still have a 1 and a 0. And notice that those two will go to 0 with that technique. Because when we add this to that and that, they'll go to 0. But now we have to take care of everything else. So row 1, 0.2 times negative 0.39 added to negative 0.2. So we have 0.39, make that negative, times 0.2, and add that to the negative 0.2. So that's minus 0.2 equals, and we end up with a minus 0.28. I'm only going to keep two decimal places. Okay, next one right here. So we have 0.2 times 1.11 added to 2. So 1.11 times 0.2 and add that to 2 equals, so we have 2.22 for that one. Okay, 0.2 times 2.78 added to 0. 2.78 times 0.2 equals 0 0.56. Of course, since that's 0 and that's 0, that remains at a 0. Okay, now we do the third row. 0.22 times this added to that, so 0.39 times 0.22 make that negative, and add it to 0.48 equals, so this becomes 0 0.39. Again, it was 0.22 times 0.39 added to 0.48, so 0.39, that's negative, times 0.22 added to 0.48 equals, gives us 0.39. It's always good to check when you're not sure. All right, next, we multiply 0.22 times 1.11 added to this, so 1.11 times 0.22, and add it to 0.2 equals, and we get 0 0.44. So we have 0.22 added to, uh, times 2.78. 2.78 times 0.22, and add it to 0, gives me 0 0.61. And finally, 0 added to 1, that remains at 1. So now we took care of the first two columns. Now we need to take this and turn into 1, so we take R3 and replace it by R3 divided by 0 0.39 to turn this into a 1. Row 1 and row 2 stay the same. So we get 1, 0, minus 0 0.28, 2.22, 0 0.56, and 0. We get 0, 1, minus 0 0.39, 1.11, 1 2.78, and 0. Now we take this whole third row divided by 0 0.39, so the 0, 0, and 1. So 0.44 divided by 0.39 equals, that becomes, hmm, let me try it again. 0.44 divided by 0.39 equals 1.13. divided by 0.39 equals 1.56. And 1 divided by 0 0.39 equals 2.56. Boy, this is quite laborious, isn't it? But hang in there. We only have a few more left to go. We now need to turn those two into zeros, which means we're going to take row 1 
and replace it by the negative of that number, 0 0.28, multiply it times the row with the 1 in it, which is row 3, and adding it to row 1. And then we take row 2, we take the negative of that, 0 0.39, add it, uh, multiply it times row 3 that has the 1 in it, and add it to row 2. So that's how we're going to take these and turn them into zeros, of course, we need to take care of the rest of the columns as well, or the rows as well. So now we come up here, and what does not change? Well, row 3 does not change, so we can go ahead and put all those numbers in there. So I have 0, 0, 1, 1.13, 1.56, and 2.56. We still have the 1 and 0, 0, 1, but notice, by going through this process, those two will become zeros. Now, we still have to take care of those other three, two rows. So, we're going to take row 3, multiply this times 0 0.18, uh, 0 0.28, and add it to 2.22. So, 1.13 times 0.28, and add it to 2.22 equals, we get 2.54 right here. 2.54. Next, we're going to take 1.56 times 0 0.28. 1.56 times 0 0.28 and add it to 0.56, plus 0.56 equals, we get 1.00, 1.00. All right, next, 2.56 times 0.28 added to 0. So 2.56 times 0.28 added to 0, we get 0 0.72, 0 0.72. So we got taken care of that. Now we all have those three numbers left to go. So we go over here, we take R3, 1.13 times 0.39 added to there. So 1.13 times 0.39 and added to 1.11 equals, and we get 1.55. Next, we take 1.56 times 0.39 and add it to 2.78. And we get 3.39. And for the last number, we're almost there. 2.56 times 0.39 and add it to zero. So we get 1.00. And finally, we can say that this is the inverse of this matrix right here. So this here represents I minus R inverse. And of course, the next step then would be is to multiply the S matrix, which is this matrix, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, multiply times this to get the values that go in there. So why don't we go ahead and finish that up while we're at it. So at least we got the inverse. So now we need to find S times I minus R inverse, which is equal to the S matrix is up there, which is the matrix 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and we're going to multiply that times this matrix up here, which is 2.54, 1 1.00, 0 0.72, 1.55, 3.39, 1.00, and 1.13, 1 1.56, 1 and 2.56. So when we do that, we'll get a matrix that looks like this. So we're going to multiply this row by this column to get the first element. So let's go ahead and do that. 0.2 times 2.54 plus 0.1 times 1.55 plus 0.3 times 1.13 equals, and we get 0.02. So what we did was we multiplied this row times this column. That doesn't look right, so I'm going to do it again. Okay, so 0.2 times 2.54 plus 0.1 times 1.55 plus 0.3 times 1.13 equals, and ah, that's why, well, without my glasses, I don't see too well, but I get 1.00. I didn't see the 1, and the 0.002, the 2 there, we can throw it off because we only keep two decimal places. All right, next, we're going to multiply this row times this column and see what we get. 0.2 times 1 plus 0.1 times 3.39 plus 0.3 times 1.56 equals, and again, we get 1.00, and finally, this row times this column, 
we get 0.2 times 0.72 plus 0.1 times 1 plus 0.3 times 2.56 equals and again we get 1.00 again there's a few we're slightly off on the numbers because uh, there's a lot of rounding that goes on in here if we kept three decimal places it would be a little bit more accurate but again you get the feel here that the ultimate result was that we end up with ones over here one there zeros there and zeros there since we only have one state that's absorbing we would expect ones all across here and zero everywhere else and that's indeed what we end up with the hard part of course is to take the i minus r matrix and find the inverse and this met method right here is the method that you want to use it's a, it's a, it's it's a lengthy process but again you get your matrix i minus r here we have the identity matrix here and you go to this process in order to turn the left side into the identity matrix and the right side then represents the inverse of that I minus R matrix. And that's how you do it for a three by three matrix.